So the next test, just because we're in this cluster for the SI joint, is we're going to look at a test called the Portland test. Now the Portland test was conceptualized by Cliff Fowler, well, he's retired now, but one of our senior faculty founding members of NIOMT. The concept at the time was doing a perturbation along the plane of the SI joint. <coughs> so if you palpate, <coughs> just medial, <coughs> excuse me, to the PSIS, along the joint plane. <clears throat> so you go to S2, and then you do another palpation near S3, and, and you basically push. Then if the person shows some kind of instability or some kind of loss of balance, then the SI joint's most likely involved. Meaning, if you do your weight-bearing kinetic tests and non-weight-bearing uh, non -bearing kinetic tests, they'll indicate the side where the lesion is or dysfunction is. So it's a, it was a form of a shortcut. Fast forward 20 years, and part of uh, when I was discussing this with Earl and Gail Malloy, some of my, member, my, my mentors, when, we, when you do this test, you're in a stance phase of gait. When you push, you're displacing the center of gravity forward unexpectedly by the patient. So the patient should automatically be able to kick in with their neuromuscular system to keep themselves balanced. If you do a gentle push and they lose balance, then that automatic system isn't engaging. So the next level is just saying, okay, something's going on with the neuromuscular system and we walk all the time. So it's a good way to train people eventually in heel strike to push off. So the end game is getting people better with walking. So fast forward to uh, the American Academy this year and uh, I, one of my uh, <coughs> fellowship uh, students, uh, Erwin McCater, did a poster presentation. And we were talking a few years ago about the Portland test and he wanted to take a look at that cluster of tests and then add the Portland test in as a cluster. And I said, well, those are provocation tests. What if we looked at the fact that if somebody's unstable with push-off, we could take the cluster that Grimaldi did for the hip, for gluteal tendinopathy, be, and see if we can match that cluster with a Portland test that's unstable, with the understanding that if you're unstable at push-off, you'll tend to shift and, and put load on that tendon in a way that might cause tendinopathy. So that's what he presented as a poster presentation and found some good early correlation with that. What I like about it, it's functional. It has to do with gait and it measures with some current research as far as what's going on with the hip. So this Portland test, although it was originally conceptualized for the SI joint, I think it's more of an unexpected change in the center of gravity where your automatic system isn't kicking in and as a result your push off is unsteady and then you you load the system somewhere so where are you going to break down maybe it'll be the hip maybe you'll be hyperextending to keep yourself in your neutral zone for the uh, the um, lumbar spine lower lumbar spine it can take any ma manner, because it's a choose your own adventure by the body, basically just saying, okay, how am I gonna keep this person upright and not falling? So, and it's not prescriptive for everyone. Everyone has their own set of joint neuromuscular coordination strategies to keep themselves upright. So that is the introduction to the Portland test. The test itself is quite easy, except for the fact that some people tend to over push on the test. So when you do it, it should be a slight un a displacement of gravity. So here's the test itself. So go ahead and let's stand. Uh, yeah, let's see, it's okay, perfect. Is that a normal walking step for you? Okay, okay. So what I wanna do is I'll just have you relax for a second. Okay, and now, now we'll start doing the Portland test. 
So when we're going to look at the Portland test, sometimes what happens is we rush through it and the patient isn't in a normal stride position. So what I like to do first is have the patient just do a normal walking step forward and backward, but switch legs. And I'll step back and I'll just watch this area here and see how they shift one way compared to the other. And you notice for him, brings his right leg forward and something different happens when he brings his left, left leg forward. Good, okay. So now go ahead and step forward with your, yep, good, with your right foot and just stay there. And I need it as a normal stance. Then when I displace his center of gravity, I'm not pushing hard, but I look to see if he loses balance. And I'm just medial to the PSIS on that plane of the SI joint. I could go on a different plane if I wanted, as far as Cliff's original test is concerned, but he loses a little bit here but it's not too bad. Now let's go to the other side. Good, and step forward with the right again. So I just have them reset a little bit. Okay, and then stop. Good, yeah, sorry, stop at your normal stance. So now when I push, see that? Do you feel that? He's fighting me, but you see on this side, this whole area. That, so we, it's not going to be a, a falling over, but you can see and he can feel that that's different than bring your other foot forward than that. Does that feel different to you? Yeah. So here it's more solid. Other side. You, you see that shift and drop already. So that's his imbalance. So when he does right leg push off, left leg stance, which matches what? Arm swing, which matched what? Where he was shut down in his multifidus on that side. So it matches a pattern where he needs to bring his arm forward and get stability through here. So when we displace his center of gravity, he wants to fall. But if I say, okay, push into my hand a little bit here, Feel those muscles kick in there, okay? Just keep those tight for me, please. Solid, feel that difference? Good, now lift your heel up like you're pushing off and keep those on and come back down. That turns into the home program. Now he's getting stability and function and his brain knows what to do with that. So let's relax. So we started with the Portland test by having him march back and forth and we were just looking to see if there was any increased drop in one side compared to the other. Then I took the one that I hypothesized was going to be the more stable one and tested that first. Now, if he suddenly lost balance, okay, I guess I have to rework my hypothesis. And then I do the other side to see which is unsteady. Then once that's unsteady, I see if I can make it steady through some kind of training with the patient and layer it right onto gate. So it turns into a home program where they feel stable. If they're a runner and they're pushing off and they're unstable on that side, then they're gonna to have to get quicker with their cadence. But I like them to do the rhythm of the exercise close to their gate cadence so that their system will get prepped and primed for it. So we did the clusters, talked a little bit about the long dorsal ligament and then the Portland test. So we're going to do that part for the SI joint today and then we're gonna circle back and just look at, at um, a mobility cluster and the manipulation if you're interested. But right now I want, this is the meat and potatoes of what I do more than the manipulation. I don't manipulate the SI joint that often because I go after the TL junction of the hip.